Merry Christmas to everybody. This is our Christmas show. Some of you who are watching us on Thursday night are catching it our before Christmas show, but we, I do believe we air sometime on Monday morning, like an absurdly early time Monday morning. So for those of you who are, happen to be watching this on Christmas, have a very Merry Christmas. And today, John, we're talking about uh, some Christmas specials. We're talking about Christmas today as much as we can, right? We talk about kind of the... I mean, like all the other holidays are specific. I mean, like Yule, because I'm a pagan, that's my holiday. Are we talking about the season or Christmas especially? Well, Christmas, because we're actually, we're talking about some Christmas movies and libertarian themes that are kind of, I don't want to say hidden, but are underneath some of these, these uh, themes. And let's first, let's talk about um, Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Now, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, it's a parable, right? It's about black markets, the nanny state, and the morality of resisting silly laws, which is something that, you know, libertarians take those into their heart, right? Wait, now, where is this from? Is this from Reason, or is this from... Uh... Well, this Reason has the article, but I, sp I spent last night watching, I, the show research last night consisted of re-watching Santa Claus is Coming to Town and uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. Mm. That's what I spent my last night doing. And there's a lot of music in those two shows, by the way. Mm -hmm. I don't remember that from a kid, from my memories as a kid. Oh, you were, and now it's just classic stuff that puts a big smile on your it face. It just puts a big smile on yeah. my face. Hey, but what actually does put a big smile on my face was you're re-watching this and, you know, the Burgermeister and all those silly little laws that they had. You know, you have to wash your socks and hang them up to dry and you can't have toys because he fell on a duck one time or mm -hmm. something, right? And that's essentially what's happening now today. In, Especially in, in, in Kafka Ornia. Yeah. That's what they should call it because it's so Kaf Kafka-esque, all the silly rules. Yeah. Like, my favorite is uh, you can't, um, this is the one that gave us all, that, that burned down all the Christmas trees early, you know, like over the last five years. Um, the big forest fires we had were the equivalent of having an extra three million cars on the road for a year. But if you do, if you you can't get an EPA permit to do the burn to clear out the forest, Kafka esque silly little rules of Christmas. We have no Christmas tree, folks, because they all burn down because of the EPA. Yeah, there's all kinds of silly little yeah. rules. Like we don't have people complain about the big pickup trucks, right? Mm. But what you don't understand is the little pickup trucks we had in the 70s and 80s. The reason we don't have them is because of EPA regulations, mm. the cafe standards. Mm. So if they want to sell the big trucks that people want to buy. They have to sell little dinky cars that no one wants to buy. Mm. You can't sell the things that sit in the middle, mm. which is why you don't have many cars in the middle. You've got the big SUVs and you've got the Econo boxes. Mm. That's all we've got now. It's because cafe standards. Mm. So, so I can't have my little truck for Christmas? No, you can't have your little pickup truck for Christmas unless you go back and buy one from the 90s. Those are so cool, though. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It, it, I mean, how often do you need a big pickup truck? The, the next time you get a full sheet of plywood, four by eight? That's the way you have a friend with a pickup. You know? <laughs> well, someone still has to have that yeah, pickup. Yeah. Yeah. Or you rent it from U-Haul, which is, I suppose, is what the people from California want you to do: is to mm -hmm. have to go rent your pickup but truck. But only from if it's a you, only if it's a union shop U-Haul. They don't, you know, want yeah. you to rent it. Maybe there'll be a state agency to rent trucks. Oh God, John, don't give, your, your do not give them trip. ideas yeah. about yeah. renting state a state agency for renting well, you cars. Know, and, and and there's some other crazy stuff. You know. Oh, we'll we've got one coming on later. We've got, if, when we get to it, some stuff that's California about uh, about their... Um, toys? Toys. California mm -hmm. mandating toys. And yeah, so that's a whole okay. other... That's a whole other issue that we're going to get to coming on later on. But it, these old movies, how you have deep meanings. Mm. You can find deep meanings in these old movies, but they somehow, unlike modern movies, who just kind of slap you over the head with these kind of meanings, with mm. the... You know, it's, they're not left to uh, the imagination. You don't have to kind of source them out. They just smash you over the head with them. You know, pick whatever. Well, like Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and all the other uh, outcasts that he was part of the posse mm -hmm. of, you know? I mean, that's, that's a hidden meaning of you don't have to be like everybody else to be very successful. You know, that's hidden in there. Yeah. You know? Yeah, well, it's the, explore the, it's the libertarian themes of individualism, self-reliance, mm -hmm. voluntary cooperation, you know, in that, in the original Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, right? It was, it highlights, as you just said, it highlights how Rudolph and his friends, Rudolph went out by himself, mm -hmm. right? The community didn't like him, so he said, screw you guys, I'm mm -hmm. going somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And he went out, made some new friends. Some like-minded, you know, 
some some unicorns like him. He yeah, found a yeah. found a few friends. Kind when, of like libertarians. Yeah. yeah. When he thought he was a danger to his friends, he went again, struck out on his own, so mm -hmm. he could protect his friends by not being around them. Mm -hmm. You know. Then decided he can't run from his problems, so he went back home to go see his mom and dad again, and then went off to save them mm -hmm. because they got, got off and got stuck, got, uh, trapped by the um, the bumble. A big bumble. I, you can tell I just watched it last yeah, night. You just watched it. It's all fresh. In it's all fresh. Like, what is he talking about? <laughs> I haven't watched it in forever. No, we just watched it last night. And so me and my son, we sat there and watched it last night. And one of the things that struck us was, wow, there's a lot of music in these shows. We didn't remember. Neither one of us remembered. Great music, though. Yeah. I mean, Great music. yeah, he's 20 years younger than me, 25 years younger yeah. than me. Yeah. And yeah, he didn't remember all that yeah. music. Yeah. But, but what really does strike me is how the, we can have these... Uh, how in the modern, in modern media, they don't have any subtlety for these kind of messages. Mm. You can't enjoy a film as the simple, just kind of have fun film of, mm. you know, Santa Claus is coming to town or Could Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Slap in the face and yeah, they slap their the messaging and, and all that stuff. And yeah. yeah, and it's like, it's it's like Saturday Night Live. Saturday Night Live takes a takes a bit that would that a, a good comedian would do on stage in a 45 seconds, and turns it into six minutes of seven minutes of boring because they've got to pound that that message at you over and over again through the little theme there. I mean, what 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 happened to good old fashioned? Enjoyment and fun and enjoyment and, light, and if, light hearted entertainment. And if you tell a good story, you can find the meaning underneath it. Yeah. I mean you don't need to smash people over the head with the meaning. And I think that <laughs> I think that's that's the real problem with modern media, modern Hollywood, is that they do. They like to smash people uh, I over probably the head take with their this meaning. Off now. Uh, this this wasn't on for a Christmas theme, it was on because it's cold outside and it's cold in the studio, so you know. <laughs> yeah. Now now let the light shine through. <laughs> All right, so we've talked about some, you know, what's, what group of people, if you wanted to, say, ruin Christmas, ruin the emotional part of Christmas, right? The, who would you talk to? Children. I mean, who's... You no, know, if you wanted to ruin the, the emotional aspect of, 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 uh, of Christmas, who would you uh, want to talk uh, to of the uh, Christmas Anybody season? in the government, you know? Or economic. Or economic. Economists? Economists. Well, yeah. Yeah. Their job is to ruin everything. Yeah. So. But you notice they never lose a meal. You know, <laughs> they come up with these crazy ideas and, you know, retire on their government pensions or their university pensions. It doesn't matter if their ideas work. You know, they like to, yeah. Yeah. So, so an, an economist, Joel Waldfogel and Stephen Landsberg. Waldfogel. Yeah. Waldfogel. You know, they've argued that uh, giving gifts is economically... Oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Unpreferable. It's not the econ most, most, uh, what's the, what's, what's most the word? efficient. The most efficient way to, to give gifts, no. right? They say give cash. But, and while giving cash may be most efficient, it does kind of defeat the purpose of the holiday season because the holiday season, the gift giving is emotional. Hmm. And, the, and the, the gift, the, you know, we, I have someone very close to me. Um, in, in my family, who who well, it's it's weird because my 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 wife is not the mother of my daughter. My my daughter's the, uh, the offspring of my practice wife, but there my daughter and my wife both um, do a wonderful job on gift giving because they think about it and think about it and they think about it and they make sure it's like really or else they just give you something that they thought about it and couldn't figure it out and they give you something and go what but usually they give you a gift that's like wow that's really cool you really thought about that but with cash uh what does that mean i couldn't be bothered uh i don't know you well enough to pick a good gift for you uh, you know if you open if we always give cash you're going to open the presents and you've got to have more than one present, right? You've got to have a bunch of presents, you know, even if they're little tiny presents. And it's cash. Oh, I wonder what's going to be in this one. Oh, it's cash. I wonder what's going to be in this one. Oh, it's cash. It might be more efficient, but certainly not as much fun. It's not as much fun and it doesn't have the emotional. Now, there are people who cash is the best gift. Oh, yeah. If you have a struggling family and, oh, yeah. and just, here's, a, here's a $400, $500 check, <laughs> Merry Christmas. Or yes, that's the best gift. Or 50 bucks. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, whenever I, I used to, in the old days, when, when uh, $100 
Bill was a lot of money. Whenever one of my employees got married, I'd always insist on, on doing, you know, the dollar dance they used to have at weddings, and I would pin a $100 bill on them, and they would freak them out because, and I knew that, you know, they're getting married and they're poppering themselves for this nice wedding they invited me to and everything. I mean, there's some people where cash is king, especially if you get it before Christmas. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, that is the, always broke at Christmas. <laughs> Which brings up another question: Is if you give cash at Christmas, then what happens to the economy? You're shifting the shopping season from before Christmas to after Christmas. Well, that might actually be good, though. You you have an extended buying period. You know, lay a bunch of people off right after Christmas. I don't know. Well, I mean, we could we could spend an hour talking about the silliness of you know. <laughs> but I I like the idea of giving gifts. And besides that. You know, if you're a good gift giver, what do you do? You keep the receipt so that if they don't like the gift, they can return it. You yeah. know. Well, and and it's it's one of those things that um, you know, you just find the gift that's right for the person you're giving yeah. it to. If it's cash, it's cash. If it's a hug, it's a hug. Mm. You know, if it, if it's a trinket because they like, you know, maybe you buy them a maybe you buy them a um, a Christmas ornament because they like Christmas ornaments. Mm. You know, someone likes to decorate their house, and yeah. so you buy them a Christmas ornament. Mm. But and, but you know, you take the time. You just don't go to the dollar take the store. Time. You just don't go to the dollar store and buy them some dollar store Christmas ornaments. You find the one yeah. that has some. Absolutely, we've agreed on something this evening. I think I think you know, cash is nice for people. I mean, especially old poor people, young poor people, or the middle class. Now, I guess all poor people, everybody but the rich. Uh, you know, cash is good, but you know, if you're going to give somebody a cash gift, I think you should give it to them before Christmas. Yeah, that's yeah. a that's yeah. a good point. Yeah. Give it to them before yeah. so they can and use maybe, it. Maybe, and Christmas. if they don't, maybe they can use it by somebody else. Gift them. Yeah. Yeah, but I also do want to know: no one who loves you wants you to go into debt to buy them a trinket. Mm. So you know, if instead of buying somebody a trinket, spending your credit card and buying somebody a trinket, just get them a card. Mm. They will. The people who love you, people card. who care about no, you, will I'm understand. Kidding. kidding. Right? No one wants you going into debt for Christmas. And so I think Don't go into debt for Christmas. That that'll be the, the number one <laughs> single next year after people try to figure out how to pay off this year's. I was gonna sing that, John, but no one wants to hear me sing. So <laughs> Don't go into debt for Christmas. Yeah, you're a better singer than me. Wait till the new year. So who is the biggest Grinch in California? Uh, Newsom. Newsom. And so what if what are our Newsom and our California legislators doing? California retailers are now if they refuse to have a gender neutral toy section, they will now be fined up to $500 under the a new California law. So now we have California mandating the type of toys, not just the type of toys, because right, if you're gonna have a gender neutral toy section, gender neutral, yeah. you have to have gender neutral toys in that section, otherwise it's not a gender neutral toy section. Well, or, so you're or, now having the government force mandating toys and- Easy workaround, easy workaround. Just don't, don't have the same have this have mixed and this sounds weird you know girls and boys toys all together in one place and then have toys that you would typically think of as girls in another and boys in another and don't label any of them. Yeah just and paint just all the walls have beige. A sign, have a sign that says toys. Yeah, all the walls beige and just kind of randomly throw the toys up there is that kind I of don't, yeah, I don't, I don't it's, it's, where California is going to make the shopping experience worse just because they want a virtue signal. Well, and, and it's even worse than that because with their shoplifting laws, the really good stuff you want to get will be gone because somebody's as long as it's less than $999, somebody's just going to run in and take it and your employees can't stop them unless they're paid security people and then they'll sue you if you hurt them and then they'll come back and kill you. <laughs> well, and yeah. Maybe the Grinch has already stole Christmas. No, it's a, uh, I cannot, um, the the lunacy of um, the geographic specificity of uh, this kind of stuff is just so crazy. Uh, Bill Maher uh, was talking, and and he lives in Southern California, and he said you cannot um, you cannot uh, go to a party in in Southern California without somebody talking about their child transitioning, right? And in Cleveland. You cannot find a party where somebody is talking about their kid transitioning. So I'm not saying there's anything wrong with people doing whatever they want to do. Not when they're children, though, folks. You don't let children even even have menthol cigarettes. You're going to let them. Yeah, that's a whole other story. That's a whole. But yeah. Anyway, so 
Um, the, you know, the idea that, that uh, this is important enough for our, our legislature, these are the same people that spent, what, $8 billion last year on homeless people, and they're multiplying like, uh, like what? Yeah, and what is it? There's $68 billion uh, in California. The, the budget deficit is $68 deficit, billion. Because yeah, they couldn't figure out that all the stupid stuff they did was going to cause the economy to tank. Yeah, and yeah. all those pro those all those long term programs that they funded were mm. going to actually cost money long term. Mm. Yeah, imagine that. I'm, I'm shocked by that. And all those all those high income earners who are leaving the state were going to take their money with them. Mm. Yeah, actually, yeah. they tried to make that illegal, that you couldn't take your money with you. It's like you know, if you if you uh, give up your citizenship in this country and leave, basically you pay state tax on all your money before you leave. It's not called a state tax, but. If you give up your citizenship and want to take your wealth offshore, Uncle Sam, or should we call call uh, Aunt Samantha just to make sure we're not sexist anymore? Well, well Uncle Sam can be, they, well, just call him Sam. They, Sam, just Sam. Sammy, they, yeah. yeah. Uh, or Sammy. You yeah, know, just Sam. Be Sam, one. Sammy. Well, Sammy's um, your, your yeah, Sammy. neutral. My dog's Sammy, and he's real pretty, but he's a he. <laughs> so, um, you know, they've done all this stuff to screw it up, yet. They're focused on the necessity of having general, gender-neutral toy sections, and that regulation or law is going to be enforced by who? So you know, cops are going to. If your store doesn't do it, is it five hundred dollars a day? Is it five hundred dollars? What? I'll bet in California it's five hundred dollars yeah, a day. Uh, per day. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. So who's going to enforce that? Police. Um, aren't they underfunded or understaffed? Oh, they'll now? send a bureaucracy. They'll send the what Department of Commerce or somebody after yeah, him, right? The SWAT just... team from the Department of Commerce. Oh, I bet they got one. I, they do you. now. I wouldn't. I would not doubt it, John. Yeah. I would not doubt it. And you know, all this is it brings up another point that Black Americans, Asian Americans, Mexican Americans, White Americans, are are no longer finding that the America is the land of opportunity. You know, it's kind of a, now a universal thing across. All the spectrum of because of, of, of the community. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting question. Why? What? What's your? Well, see, I don't. I, I disagree with the premise. Actually, I'm, I'm glad you have it on there because I disagree. It is for the. It is. It is the land of opportunity for an awful lot of people. There are an awful lot of immigrants that come in here and, and come here, and within by the time the person is second generation, they're going to medical school. I. I right from coffee houses. I don't want to give them a plug. <clears throat> Temple naked. Uh, but um, and, and a lot of the people there that are studying because they're in like third year medical school and you can tell them third year because they have big circles under their eyes because of surgical rotation. Their, their parents were immigrants and their parents bootstrapped themselves and, and worked their way up to have a pretty decent job and made sure that their kids had an education and um, um, are now doing well, and that brings up the point that and and the 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 woke crowd will will hate me for this, but every single bit, every single bit of research about successful children says um, you got two parents in the home doesn't I don't think it matters if it's a guy and a girl or okay, it's two, two parents. women or it's two parents two parents in a home in a long term relationship the the kids are invariably by i think it's uh, um two standard deviations so th that's a lot it's like 93 percent i think maybe more um better off so uh you look at you look at the segment of society that's doing poorly single uh, family head of household um uh, not a focus on education uh, and I'm not saying you need a university of education, uh, university education. Yeah, education has a lot of different paths. It doesn't yeah, have, it's yeah. not even necessarily school. No, you no, can, no. There's lots of ways to get a good education. And, and you used to be able to go to a community college back when they called them junior colleges and get a great uh, education as a uh, welder. And I think we're leaning back that way because most folks don't need a college education. Yeah, well, even a lot of the major companies now, like Google, they no longer require a, a degree because mm -hmm. they're more interested in your skills and, and your intelligence, your ability to think and through problems. Your ability to work as a team. Yeah. And get along with others, plays well with others. Yeah. Essentially, all those things that the people in college have been taught not to do. Mm. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Imagine that. So, 
as we get on this part, John, we've got uh, another topic here. We've got like five minutes. Um, is there's no right to bully and harass, which is something that we've kind of seen recently to these um, last mm. month or so, right? In the last what is there? Is, well, that's a good question. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, do you have the right to interfere with somebody else's uh, daily lives, daily routine? I mean, does your right to protest, which everybody, you know, we all kind of agree that you have a right to protest, but does your right, when does your right to protest infringe on somebody else's right to go about their day? Mm. Well, I would say um, um, when I'm trying to drive to work and they're laying across the freeway, you know what we call people that do that? Road Speed kill. bumps. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, it, you know, there, there are people who, who assume that their religion, uh, in this case a lot of it is, is uh, environmentalism to the point they're so fanatical about its religion, um, you know, d d have decided that in order to promote their religion to others, they can destroy pri literally priceless works of art or sabotage them to where you know somebody's going to have to spend years fixing the problem, or glue themselves to a tennis court during a major sporting event, or any of the rest of that. And and um, you know, I support people's rights to protest and demonstrate and all the rest of that. I don't think shouting people down is right. You know, I mean, we all have a right to bully pulpit. I, don't we have an, something printed in our Constitution that says we have a right to express ourselves? Yes, we have a right to express ourselves. Yeah. And we also have the right to go about our free business without being, you mm. know, in, infringed upon. Mm. One and, would hope. And so that's the interesting question. So, you know, you have a right to, you know, march down the street. Right. And, you know, you're going to block streets. But streets get blocked all the time because of accidents mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. trees falling down or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. And so that's fine. But when you block Poor a freeway. Or planning. Yeah. yeah. Or when you, but when you block a freeway, you're essentially capturing people. You're mm -hmm. kidnapping people. They yeah. can't leave. Yeah. They, can, they can say, hey, I need to go. Can that's you let me through? And they say, so no, there are, that's there kidnapping. Are cases, there are cases, there was one in London where this happened. Somebody died because an ambulance driver couldn't get the person to the hospital. Right, because these people were protesting, and they will say, "Oh, one, you know, one life is a small price to pay to prevent the the, the rape of the earth, or whatever their the religion of the day is, the, uh, you know, whatever it is." But yeah, I absolutely. disagree, and I, I have a solution to it. Um, penalize the people financially for the lost work of all the people, the lost wages of all the people they stop on the way to work on the freeway or penalize them um, criminally for the person that died because they couldn't get to the hospital, or the fact that that child was born um, and, and needed some help and didn't get it and was in a ne neonatal unit for three months so they didn't have to be because some clown was laying across the freeway. Make them, make them pay that off. Yeah. We're debtors' prisons when we need them. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> we don't need debtors prisons, John. We just need these people to be held a, a, to their account. People I mean, either people accountable. Either yeah, that's class yeah. action lawsuits to get them and their funders, or if it's it's going down and filing charges for kidnapping. Why, and why isn't when when people put put riots together, why don't they use RICO laws to get them? You know, I mean that these crazy uh, laws that where were put together to get organized crime that they're now using for political reasons. Why don't they use those for people who organized and were parts of a riot, right? Why, mm -hmm. why don't they use RICO laws for them? If you're going to use that, if you're going to have that crappy law in the books. Anyway, you want to close? I know. Well, you no, we've got. Well, we've it's got a couple minutes. The news. A minute. We've got a minute, and we. It's the. We've got. What I want is just some equality, right? If the left-wing protesters can get away with, you know. And trapping people on freeways, if mm. they can get away with harassing people in restaurants, if they can get away with, you know, all those all those things that were, you know, three years ago were, like, you know, considered Crimes. that were you know, three years. Remember, in 2020, they were perfectly normal. That was a normal avenues of protest, mm. right? Harassing people in restaurants, it's mm. a normal way of protest. Mm. But now we've got, um, if the left wing is doing it, then it's okay. But if anybody else mm. is behaving that way, mm. then we've got, you don't have a right to harass. And, no, that's true. And the, really, the truth is nobody should have a right to bully or harass people. You don't have the right 
to prevent people from going about their uh, about their make. business. I have a special message. Have you noticed that we're hearing very little about the war between Ukraine and Russia since the Hamas invasion of Israel on October 7th? This new war is capturing the attention of the media and moving Ukraine to page six. Part of this is because Israel is winning. Israel realizes that war is about killing people and breaking things. And they're doing exactly that. First, they told the Gazans to flee to southern Gaza because northern Gaza would be under attack. Now that northern Gaza is mostly conquered, the Israelis are going after southern Gaza. The Gazans have nowhere to flee. The borders to other Arab countries are mostly closed. Like all wars, this war will be bloody and cruel, but Israel will win. Meanwhile, Ukraine is well on its way to losing its war with Russia. The much ballyhooed Ukrainian summer offensive has been a bust. Both Russia and Ukraine have had horrendous casualties. There is a fortified front line from the Dnieper Delta to the Russian border. Gaining an inch of ground comes at horrendous cost in human casualties. It's a war of attrition. Both sides are having trouble finding more cannon fodder. But the thing is, Russia has three and a quarter times the population of Ukraine. Absent direct NATO involvement with troops, Russia will win this war of attrition. Putin is pulling out all the stops, including turning prisoners into soldiers and dedicating a third of its economy, economy's production capability to producing weapons and munitions. It's important to note the U.S. role in the lead up to this war. When the Soviet Union fell apart, we agreed that in exchange for Ukraine giving up its nuclear weapons, we would not invite them to join NATO. We reneged. In 2014, our CIA was involved in a coup overturning the democratically elected pro-Russian president of Ukraine. Before the war, Putin and Zelensky were close to reaching an agreement that would have prevented war. The U.S. and U.K. sent U.K. Prime Minister Boris Yeltsin, Boris Johnson, that is, to scuttle that deal. Now, back in the U.S.A., with trillion-dollar deficits, as far as the eye can see, the appetite for funding both the war in Ukraine and the war in Gaza is beginning to run into roadblocks. The simple truth is, American security is under no threat resulting from who controls Ukraine or who controls Gaza. Israel is more than capable of funding its own war with Hamas. The countries in Europe, the Baltics, Poland, Germany, Slovakia, and Hungary, which do have security interests in who, who controls Ukraine, may have good reason to come to the aid of Ukraine. We don't, and we cannot afford it. Since the end of World War II, we have stumbled into, or been pushed by the military-industrial complex into, countless skirmishes in four major wars, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, and Afghanistan. All have been losses or standoffs for us. The only victor has been the bottom line for defense contractors. It's time to stop the loss of blood and money to the war industry, and the place to stop is in Ukraine and Israel. The time is now. They're not going to have a Merry Christmas in any of those countries, I'm afraid, but I hope that we have a Merry Christmas by staying out. I'm Richard Fields with Report from the Field.